Now, Eddie Wimbury has been out on his travels again. This time he's looking back at the history of the old flour mills. I'm an ordinary man, nothing special, nothing grand I've had to work for everything I own Oh well I never asked for a lot, I was happy with what I got Enough to keep my family and my home Now they say the times are hard Well behind me is one of the great landmarks of Waterford City it was known as the flour mills, or was it the flour mills, because there were two or three different companies working out of it. We're going to find out about that because within the next year or two, this whole building is going to be demolished and one of the most exciting commercial developments ever undertaken in Ireland will take place on the Keyside, opposite the city of Waterford, in the flour mills itself. To find out a little bit about the history of the mills, and by God it has a checkered history because at one stage it employed hundreds of people. To find out a little bit about that history, and to have a look at the remains of what uh, constitute the old building inside, we're going to do that now and talk to some of the people that are involved in it. So come on in, we'll have a look at it. Now with a handshake and a check, it seems so easy to forget. Loyalty through the bad times and through good. Now the owner says he's sad to see the things have got so bad. But the captains of industry won't let him lose He still drives a car and smokes a cigar But still he takes his family on a cruise He'll never Jimmy, uh, it's a rather sad affair for you, I said, to come over and see something like this <laughs> uh, that's going, not going to be with us much longer. It is indeed, Eddie, but uh, uh, unfortunately I live nearby and I'm looking at it every day. Could never get away from it. Whereas everybody else that worked here, well the best part of them, were all away from here. So they, for, they didn't see it every day and see it decaying like it is. Now I want, you to, I want you to start out some questions for me. First of all, I mentioned about there are two or three companies because across the river in the city we would just have seen this as the flour mills. Well I call it the Trinity. You had R&H Halls who were the oldest. Now all R&H Halls done was import wheat and wheat was for flour mills. Hence the mill was built alongside of halls. In between uh, halls and the flour mills, flour mills was built in 1935, very modern mill in them days. Uh, in between was a place called uh, Presto Flake Maze, which they uh, flaked the maize for the farmers. Now, as you know, in, the, in olden times, uh, maize was a staple diet even for human beings, was uh, the flake, it was like uh, cornflakes for all the world, but um, that went out of existence. But up, uh, then we had uh, this end up here, where we are now at the moment, it was a drying station for the mill, for the native wheat. Now, g t tell me something else, because you, you, you said something there, which again, water people can identify with. It was also known as the Flake Maze Company, but they were also made a very important ingredient called silk raisin flour, and indeed they had a peculiar name to the flour. Yeah, well, uh, that came on stream in, uh, f 50 years ago, when uh, Edmund Hillary uh, climbed Mount Everest. Alan Harris, father of Jeff Harris of WLR FM fame, uh, his father, he named the flower, the self-raising flower, Everest. Now, you mentioned Alan Harris, and of course, uh, Philip Lynch, the chief executive, managing director of, of IAWS, who are now a public well, he company. He came on stream at a later stage into the mill. And he, which, he would have worked his way through the system. Yeah, he, he went then to uh, Halls before he went to oh yeah, WOS and God knows where he's gone now, he's gone so high up the He's other turning them into yeah, the, to a multi, uh, a multi international conglomerate, there's yeah, no two ways correct, about that. Yeah, yeah. And indeed, he, 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 one point we must make when we're talking about AWS is the fact that um, they made the, the uh, and across the river, a place that you would have been familiar with again, which is now probably one of the state-of-the-art museums in the country, uh, they made that available, uh, readily available to Waterford Corporation. In, in the 50s, 
uh, there was so much wheat, native wheat, grown at that time. There wouldn't be enough storage here for it to store at all. So that was Hall's property at that time. So the Flournemans used to rent it from, we say, September until the following, maybe April, and they store the wheat over there. No, th that would suggest to me that there was a tremendous uh, amount of people working here, Jimmy. Yeah, but uh, in the early stage, again, like everything else, as you can see just there, uh, there was a, a balcony. The lorry had to back uh, into the balcony. And uh, remember, all the stuff was in sacks. Some of them sacks, uh, sacks that have 20 stone, right. 16 stone. They were all, but then they were weighed, hand weighed up on scales. So there was two sets of those. So there was a vast amount of uh, people uh, employed in, in that process. Uh, the numbers of swans that used to come oh, up here. Yeah, yeah, they're gone, gone. No feeding for them. I remember counting, it was gone beyond my memory, but it was a vast number. I, it was over 40 anyway, swans out in that river. But going back to the ferry again, the ferry just came in, just here a couple of years away from us. Yeah. Well, at that time, that, that was the last ferry, because that ferry went from just there outside uh, the premises here over to the clock tower. But before that, the ferry was from the Coliseum over to the, uh, uh, just there, the slip at the boat club. That was the old, that's where and all the bridges started. McCarthy, yes. Yeah. I often travelled on it for an old penny. Mm. Uh, it, this in time, and certainly time, when we say time, within the next five years will be the, the, the new, uh, I suppose really the new jewel in the crown of, the, uh, of Waterford. It'll be a fantastic uh, place to see all together. So we'll go inside and have a look at it. Now my cheque is spent And I can't afford the rent There's one law for the rich, one for the poor Every day I've tried to salvage some of my pride Find some work so as I might pay my way oh, But everywhere I go The answer's always no There's no work for anyone here today No work today And so condemned I stand just an ordinary man Like thousands beside me in the queue I watch my darling wife Trying to make the best of life and God knows what the kids are going to do Now that we are faced With this human waste A generation cast aside for as long as I live, I never will forgive You've stripped me of my dignity and pride You've stripped me bare You've stripped me bare You've stripped me bare This room that we're in now at the moment looks very, very impressive. And indeed, I know uh, over time, it, it probably it, it, it looks rusty and all like that, but it must have been a very impressive room, this one. It certainly was. The floor now, you could eat your dinner off it. It was so polished and clean. Like, everybody get the impression that floor mills was very, very dusty. It wasn't. It was absolutely spotless. But you have, we're here on this floor now, it's the silk floor. And you can see right behind me now, you can see the silks, they revolved around and the stock that was in them was sent through it. The stuff that came through it went one way, stuff that was left inside went another way and went down to the next process. So it kept on going, going like that until eventually they had the flower. So literally everything started at the top floor and the finished product came out of the bottom floor? Well, more or less, yeah. But it had to come up and go down, you know. Hence all the elevators are here. Now, where we just came from was the packing end of it as well, you know. And uh, the, the warehouse end we just came from. We're now in the middle's end. And behind us is the screen's end where the wheat was prepared. It had to be washed and ready for, uh, for milling. 
and then you had different types of wheats for different flowers. You had the baker's flour, and you had the retail flour, and you had the self-raising flour, three different flours. Yeah. And would all, would, all this flour, would all this flour be made from Irish wheat, or would it be no, a they'd, wheat? No, they'd, um, they'd be foreign wheat as well, so hard wheats and soft wheats. And, and those wheats would come from, from uh, uh, Argentina, the, uh, Australia, uh, yeah, and the United from, States? Yeah, yeah. Tell me the story about the, the wild rumour, that, and, and the whole town had it at one stage, the wild rumour that circulated from the, over here that nearly caused the demise of Eamon de Valera. No, Eddie, that was on the other end, which were just after coming through, where the slides are there, that the, the sacks of flour, or Bran and Pollard, would go down to the lorry on, uh, just in, in the yard. But one morning, one of the lads said, I wonder if we get a day off today, and fell on the lorry, said, Hoy, what's up? But De Valera was dead, he was the president at the time. And by one o'clock that day, RTE denied the rumour that started the war for that the president was dead. <laughs> so that was quick going, wasn't it? Covered the whole country. Oh, that was quick going altogether. Okay, let's have a look at some more of the stuff here. And so condemned I stand, just an ordinary man. Like thousands beside me in the queue. I watch my darling wife Trying to make the best of life And God knows what the kids are going to do Now that we are faced With this human waste A generation cast aside For as long as I live I never will forgive You've stripped me of my dignity and pride You've stripped me back Jimmy, there's one thing intriguing me uh, and uh, you know, when we spoke about the IAWS connection and we spoke about the Hall connection and we spoke about all the different connections with it uh, was there ever a Waterford connection here? Yes, this was the Waterford flower mills and yeah, Orrin H. Halls was the other place and Flake Maze was the other one now, Halls always remained R&H Halls. Flake Mays became Bestock when this building that we're in now was converted from the screenhouse of the mill into a provender mill. And uh, the product that uh, turned out was called Bestock. And I have to put the final question to you because I know that you've been very informative and indeed uh, you've amassed a tremendous amount of information. Are you ever going to sit down and write a book about this place? Because, it, 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 you know, as Simon said to me earlier, it, it's called out for somebody to write down the, the history of the place. But who'd read it? Who'd be interested? A good question, but I would imagine given that, uh, given that this building itself and this set of buildings and this area over here was so important in the commercial and historical life of water, because remember we all grew up with it over here, and I can recall on the other side of the city, one of the great things about the other side of the city was that if you wanted to get, before we ever got in multi-channel, if you ever wanted to get in uh, the BBC, ITV and UTV or whatever was coming in at the time, you simply got up on the roof, aimed your area at the, at, at the flour mills, and then whatever magic was over here, you got the signal. Yeah, but we, uh, I used to call sometimes this place an institution because there were so many characters here. How they ever got under one roof is beyond me. <laughs> there were some real characters, but I wouldn't like to go naming characters now because I could leave out somebody and they'd be offended. Well, of course, then again, too, there's an awful lot gone to the middle in the sky. You've stripped me bare. You've stripped me bare. Baby